What's up, folks? We're gonna dig into some code and uh, for neural style transfer on static uh, images using the optimization method. And let's just start. Awesome. Let's jump to GitHub here. You can see the URL, and I've put the link in the description. So I basically wrote this uh, this repo only for this video, uh, but it was totally worth it. I learned a lot, and I hope you will benefit from it also. So it's uh, written in PyTorch. I already mentioned that in previous video, and uh, I think it's pretty easy to use. I'm just just going to briefly uh, run through this readme file uh, with you. Um, and in the next section, you can just see the uh, uh, on the left side is the output from the algorithm. On the right side are uh, content and style inputs. And why yet another NST repo? Basically, I couldn't find a reference re implementation uh, in PyTorch. Uh, and uh, other ones were really too complicated. And I think this, this thing is really simple. And we got some examples here, uh, just some cherry pick ones, which I really liked. Uh, I think they're really neat. Uh, and then following up, uh, same thing, just in the left column um, is the output. And on the right side is the style image that produced uh, that output. And the following two sections are really important. They just uh, show you how you can manipulate the weights, the respective weights uh, here. Uh, the first one is the style uh, weight, where you freeze the content weight. And just going from left to right, you can see uh, that the amount of style in the output image is increasing. And then the, this, is, this is something that's rarely, rarely uh, explained. It's a total variation loss, which uh, helps you just um, smoothen out the image. And then going from left to right here, uh, you can see that the image becomes really smooth. Here we can see that the, uh, the way you initialize uh, the input image, uh, whether you use the noise, whether uh, you use content as the initial, initial image or style, you get different results. So on the left side, you can see uh, what you get when you start from, from the content image. And that's usually the best way to go here. And in the middle is the random uh, initialization. And on the right side, you can see the style initialization where uh, the content from the style image actually leaked into the output image, which is probably undesirable. Depends if you get a really cool image that's cool. And here is the reconstruction from the original paper. I really encourage you to just uh, go through this readme. I think it's really digestible. Like it's really visual, you'll understand stuff. Uh, but I want to jump to code as soon as possible here. Uh, this is something I already explained in the last video, how we can reconstruct only content or only the, the style image. And it also looks really nice. And finally, the setup. So this part should really be a piece of cake. Uh, you basically have only two instructions to run here. Uh, in an ideal case, in a non-ideal case, you'll have to install system-wide CUDA and also Miniconda. Uh, which I'll be using uh, throughout the video. Okay, let me just move the browser here and open uh, Anaconda. And I'll just navigate to the place where I want to clone the, the repo. And that's here. And I'll just do git clone uh, from this URL here. And that should just download the repo directly. And once it downloads, you can just verify it's there by typing in start like this. You can see it's here. And now we just have to navigate directly into it. Uh, what's the name? PyTorch. Yep. And we have to run only one simple command. That's conda and create. And it just went and installed a uh, conda environment for us. And now we just have to do activate uh, PyTorch, sorry, PyTorch NST like this. And we're ready to jump into code. Yeah. Okay, so I lied. Uh, there is one more thing you need to do, and that's uh, open up your favorite IDE minus PyCharm and just uh, connect it to the interpreter from the freshly create, created Conda environment. And you do it like this in PyCharm. You just open up settings here and project interpreter, and you just set it to PyTorch NST. That's it. Let's go. I jumped to main function here, and uh, these are some of the uh, default uh, parameters you really don't need to change. Uh, this one, for example, is the default location for uh, content images. Uh, this one is a default location for style images. And I'm saving all of my images as JPEG because it saves lots of bandwidth. And for this type of output images, it also keeps the high quality uh, of those images. 
Okay, so coming next are some of the parameters you'll be changing and playing with. So basically uh, what you have here is uh, default uh, content image. That's uh, this one for now, Lion JPEG. And we'll be using uh, this one for as a style. Uh, the height is fixed, 500 pixels is totally fine for, for this demo. Uh, minus one means only final. So I'll put minus one here. One means uh, save every single intermediate image. Uh, I'm using VGG19 and we'll be using LBFGS. I'll be talking more about uh, the optimizer a bit later. Okay, so we've uh, skipped uh, these two here. Uh, should reconstruct content will basically uh, let you choose between um, uh, reconstructing either content or uh, style uh, image. And I'll set it to true, so we'll be first reconstructing content. And then uh, the should visualize representation basically uh, plots either feature maps or gray matrices depending whether you picked uh, content or style. So I'll put it to true. We want to visualize feature maps here. And so following up, just we just wrap all of the all of the data in this dictionary object, and we just call the function reconstruct image uh, from representation. There's one more thing we need to do here, and that's set a different content layer in VGG. Uh, net. So I'll go to VGG Net's file here. Uh, so I'm using VGG 19, right? So, okay. And I'll just set four, I'll set it to, let's say one here. And that means we'll be using a uh, ReLU to uh, one layer. So with that being said, uh, let me just go and go ahead and run this. And this is what we get. Uh, that's a feature map. That's a first feature map from this uh, layer. Uh, ReLU to one uh, for the line image and let me show you the line image here uh, from the default uh, content directory so this is what we are reconstructing let me close it and show you a couple of other uh, feature maps here and uh, the reason I've chosen ReLU to one is because it extracts low, lower level features uh, whereas higher, higher layers would extract like higher, higher level uh, features from from images and so you can see how it looks like and let's see that in action so if I close this oops if I stop the program here I go to VGG and we we pick some other layer like let's say we pick com 4 2 uh, actually we'll, we'll we'll pick uh, yeah uh, com 4 2 and if I go and start the program now this is what we get and we can see that the feature maps are much more abstract. Uh, they tend to focus on like uh, semantically meaningful uh, uh, parts of the image. Like uh, in the case of lion, uh, it will put focus on eyes, as you can see here, or main, uh, or yeah, like I'll just let you have a look here. And you can see like the nostrils and the eyebrows the lion has an eyebrow my god okay now let me stop this and change a couple of settings here first we want to set this to one we want to save every single image uh let me change the the layer to uh ReLU to one so that we get better uh, uh reconstruction uh, i mean less abstract reconstruction and finally let's toggle the visualization uh, off and let me start this now we'll just reconstruct the content image. So I went ahead and done that, and this is what we get. If you go here, you can see the relative path here, output images. We can see that the noise is slowly uh, morphing into this uh, line image as we go down the pipeline. And I went ahead and just created a video out of these images, and this is what we get here. So let me just return to the beginning because it's really fast and you can see the morphing happens really fast with LBFGS. Okay, just an important note on performance. So if you're using LBFGS, there is a huge chance that you'll run out of uh, uh, video memory. So I'm using, I can show you the graph here. So I'm using RTX 2080 and I guess not, not a lot of you folks will have a GPU that strong. So this GPU has eight gigs of RAM and you can see here uh, the algorithms in this repo with this configuration will eat up around three gigs and that's a lot. There's basically two things you can do. Uh, one is either a switch to Atom optimizer 
And the second one, if, if you want to keep LPFGS because it's really good perfor and performant with this uh, task, uh, you can play with a resolution. Uh, so now it's, I think, like 500 pixels, put it down to 250, 300 or something. Uh, you can uh, play with the LBFGS class itself, like change the history size is 100 currently. And you can switch to VGG16 because it will uh, eat up less video memory. It's a smaller and uh, shallower model than VGG19. So now let's switch to style. Uh, let's change a couple of parameters here. Uh, we want to visualize gram matrices and we want to pick style here. So if I run it, we get the gram matrix for this image. Let me show you uh, this one. And let me close it here. And this gram matrix comes from uh, layer already one one. And it's just a part of the complete style representation um, uh, for this image. Uh, we have five, uh, five gram matrices in total, uh, which compose the, the general style representation. You can also see a strong uh, line uh, going through the main diagonal. And the reason for that is because uh, feature map, so when you take a dot product between a feature map and itself, you get a you get a high output. And that's what the gram matrix actually represents. It's a just a, uh, like a set of uh, different dot products between different feature maps. Let's just go ahead and see a couple of these. So this is how it looks for the next layer. It's already getting weaker in intensity. Um, because they are they are being normalized, and the more elements they have, the the weaker the intensity. Uh, ReLU three one and four one. Basically, you won't see anything special here. Now, if I exit here uh, and once more, we'll just go into reconstructing the style. Okay, let's see what the output image looks like. So, if I open it up here, you can see the relative path again. Output images. And starting from beginning, it's a noise image as with the, the same thing as with content reconstruction. And as we go down the pipeline, it gets increasingly uh, stylized. And the final image looks like this. So I went ahead and uh, created a video and it looks like this. I encourage you to go and play ahead with this. And by the way, I I do have a video creating uh, function included in the in the repo. Uh, you just go here, and you just uncomment uh, this uh, this function. So that's it. Reconstructing the content and style images. Now let's jump into the uh, neural style transfer script. Let's go. Okay, so just go ahead and open this uh, neural style transfer uh, file. And you can see that the this script shares a lot of uh, a lot of parameters with the reconstruction script. Uh, basically, the only three uh, new ones and important ones are content weight, style weight, and total variation uh, weight. So you'll basically by tuning those three, you'll get any image pair uh, to like just merge together really nicely. When I say image pair, I mean content style images. Let's go ahead and try it out. So I'll take a content image. I'll, I'll take the following content image. This one, it's called figures. And I'll take the following style image. Uh, it's a famous uh, Starry Night from, um, from, from Van Gogh. And I'll just combine those two here. So I'll put it figures uh, JPEG. And I'll put here uh, Van Gogh Starry Night JPEG and everything else here looks fine and let me just run it once that's finished we get this as the output we go to combine figures so the the name is always like this uh, like the, the the two images you you used uh, that's the the name of the directory where the output images will will go to and this is a result and it looks really nice and I'm not sure if it's pronounced. I think it's the, the the right name to pronounce to pronounce this guy's name name is actually Van Gogh in in Dutch. Just 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 a fun fact. Okay, enough with uh, fun facts. Let's go and see uh, how the actual implementation looks like. So, I'll go to the beginning of the function here, and it starts here. So the first important bit here is the on the line 59. It's the prepare image function. So if I found, find the function it's here, uh, you just, what it does is it loads the image uh, as a NumPy array, 
and then we do this transform here. Uh, basically, it's really important that you uh, scale the image uh, pixels with 255 because the VGG net uh, learn during training to deal with data like that. And also normalization step is important. Uh, I just used uh, the ones that were used for the VDG training also. Uh, so we apply the transform. We put the device to CUDA. So we copy the, the, the tensor to GPU. And then we do unsqueeze, which basically just adds a dummy dimension so that it looks like a batch. And we do that for both the content and the style image. Let me return back here. So that was that part. Second, we, uh, I always, like the content image is the best way to initialize the, 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 the image. And I just wrap that initial image in this variable uh, from like a torch class. And this bit is important, requires red to means that uh, actually the, the, this image is what is trainable. So usually when you do a machine learning training, what you do is you train, you tune the weights of the model. Here, the model weights are actually freeze. And the only thing that actually changes is the init image itself. Next up, we prepare uh, the model here and we take the indices uh, from the corresponding uh, layers that we're using for content and star representation. So this, this variable here contains both the index and the name. So say one and value one, one, uh, stuff like that. And then we feed through the content and style images, which were prepared previously. And finally, we obtain the representation. Um, I talked about this in the last video. And the final bit is here. So I'll just skip Adam. I'll pick one of the numerical optimizers. I'll, I'll use LBFGS here. And the important, so there's just a bunch of boilerplate code here. The closure, that's something that PyTorch Py, Py, Py just uh, like requires you to define. Uh, what is important here is the generation of the loss, build loss function. And then we just do the backward uh, backprop on the classical uh, like backprop on the loss function that was defined. Let's take a quick look at the build loss function. So go to the implementation there. So what we do here is we take the optimization image, which was initialized with the content image, if you remember, and we just feed it through the VGG. We get, and we get the current set of feature maps. And by just doing MSC loss uh, between the target content representation and the current content representation, we, we get that portion of the loss. We do a similar thing for style loss, uh, but here we just uh, form gray matrices out of uh, those feature maps first and then do the MSC loss here. I just encourage you to go at your own pace through this code and understand what's happening here. So, and the total loss finally is just a weighted sum of the content loss, of the style loss, and of the total variation loss. Uh, and that was it. So just wrapping it all up. So what we do is we have a VGG net, which is frozen. We have the init image, which we are tuning so that the feature map it's pr is producing are getting more similar to the reference uh, feature maps, which are given by the content image and by the style image. That's it. And finally, there are two things that I'd like you to go and experiment with. Uh, the first one being that uh, you should experiment with content style and uh, total variation losses. So I've actually put it down a table uh, for some like reasonable values you should use uh, uh, depending on the optimizer you're using. So you can see here LBFGS, content in it, uh, just use those weights uh, as a starting point. And just go experiment, uh, just tweak them, uh, uh, increase them, uh, decrease them, and see how they affect the, the end result. I think that would be a really good learning uh, uh, like uh, experience. And the second thing would be to go to the architecture itself. So go to VGG19 and try and experiment with different sets of uh, layers which you're using for the style representation. Try and add like uh, COM43, uh, add more layers, uh, uh, subtract some layers, whatever, just experiment there and try and see how different sets affect the image quality. And if you find some superior representation, let me know in the comment, that would be really cool. So that was it for this video, uh, folks. Um, <clears throat> I just uh, encourage you to go and play with the code uh, as that's the best way you can you can learn how to do this actually and understand it uh, thoroughly. So I just encourage you also to give me uh, like constructive feedback down in the comments. That would mean a lot to me because I'm still learning. I'm I'm, I'm learning with you folks here, and you, you can tell me if the video was too long or too short, which I doubt. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyways, any any comment is really welcome. 
Thanks a bunch, subscribe, and see you in the next video.